Hey guys, EVP Man here. Now in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at a super size, and I do mean super size, this thing is big, industrial 3D printer that has a dual print head system that can be easily be converted to a single print head. And in our home, we call this the silent giant. It's a giant because it's big, it prints big, and it prints so good, and it's super quiet, no noise. Now, this machine is an Etsy maker's dream machine. Let's check out the QIDI iFast 3D printer. Now, like I said, this printer is big. We're talking about 330 by 250 by 320 bill plate. Now, you're gonna be able to connect to this printer either via Wi-Fi, through the network, or USB, and it has print speeds of anywhere from 30 all the way up to 150 millimeters per second. Now, the nozzle itself is 0.4 millimeters, and you can heat it up depending on the nozzle type that you have, the print head, all the way up to 300 Celsius. Now, that's gonna give you a whole host of flexibility when it comes to print materials. You can print carbon fiber, you can print nylon, PETG, PLA, ABS, TPU, you name it. Now, one of the reasons why you can print so many different materials, it's because it has a thermal cavity. It has almost like an oven type design that allows you to regulate and control the print environment, which is something you don't see on many printers. It also has a printer, uh, let's say filament runout sensor, which is pretty common, right? And as we mentioned, since this has a dual extruder, you can actually print two colors, or you could actually use those uh, dissolvable filaments that you can use for supports to make some really functional prints. Now to be able to print in those high temperatures, you need a special nozzle. This printer also features a ruby nozzle that supports high temperature printing as well as those abrasive materials. And when I show you some of the samples, you're gonna be amazed on how clean they are and you know, literally no defects. Now from a print perspective, my experience on this printer has been pretty much error free. And as you can see by the detail of these prints, the absolute detail is stunning. It is super clean, uh, really no problem whatsoever. And we're really surprised. I think a lot of this quality comes from the controlled print environment. The fact that it can regulate the temperature really drives to this quality. Now the menu system for this printer is incredibly extensive and easy to use, especially with this very large touchscreen. Now the other standout feature for me is how you can control the temperature chamber. That controlled temperature chamber really will contribute to giving you fantastic prints. Because let's face it, most of the failures, and you may not know this, but most of the failures are gonna take place because of not the printer itself, but the environment that it's printing. So. Literally, if you are in a cold room or a hot room, depending on the material that you're printing, you're gonna to have to adjust either your print head temperature or the bed temperature as well to get a, something to stick. Because this is fully enclosed, and it also has a filtration system, by the way, you can actually control that environment to have a constant temperature. That's gonna give you some spectacular prints because of that control. Literally, yeah, in some of the other printers that I have that are open, um, even in our basement, what ends up happening is I have to change, depending on the temperature of the house, uh, anywhere from five to 10 Celsius, the temperature of either the print bed or the print head because of how cold things could get or how warm things can get. So this gives you a worry-free environment that you're always gonna have consistent quality. Now, while this printer is considered industrial grade, I have to say that this is a very easy printer to use. We're talking about zero, zero changes in the actual slicer. And that's really important to me because, you know, I get a lot of printers and we also do a lot of printing um, in our home. And what I want, and I'm sure you do too, is you want a printer that you can open it up, take it out of the box, plug it in, load it with filament, and like that, start to print. That's what this printer is all about. Even though it's industrial grade, a beginner can use this, and even someone who's a pro can use this too. Now, one of the cool things about this printer is that it not only comes with one, but two flex plates, two of them. And I'll tell you, these things are magnetic. They lock in place. It's really hard sometimes to take them off, but the benefit of this is that you're not gonna have any kind of shifting that could be contributed because of the build plate actually moving. And I love the fact that all you have to do is twist for the prints to pop out. Now in our home, we play a lot of D&D and we print a lot of D&D type structures. So take a look at the detail of these prints. And what I wanted to share with you is that this print has no supports whatsoever. Take a look at how crisp and clean this roof is. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll tilt it on its side so you can see that right there. Look how nice that is, all right? Put it over here, just, just great, all right? And as you look at the bottom, you can see no supports. There was no supports printed with this at all. So a lot of detail, really, really clean prints. And I have to say that it probably has to do with the, the temperature control, which by the way, I wanted to mention, this printer does include a, a camera inside, right? It comes standard with it, where you can actually monitor everything that's going on in the printer. 
which is absolutely, again, fantastic. Now, that is one of the, or at least the top of this structure. Over here, just wanted to show you how it works with functional structures, right? So here is a gate, and notice how functional this is. This was printed. Uh, this is, again, just using a silver silk PLA, right, or gray PLA. And you can see how nice that looks. You can see how the precision over here at the top, and you can see how well things are cut out. And you can see that right there, right? Very, very nice. Uh, the other print that we have right here is this, uh, this structure right here. So this is the bottom portion of it. Once again, you will see that there is um, some support material on this one, just um, on some of the areas that, that stuck here. Um, like you can see that right here. I wanted to show you uh, something that was there. Uh, but you'll notice at the inside, look at how much detail you have in there. There was no support material in the arches and any of the arches that you see here or in the doorway. Um, just on, on some of the areas, like right here is where I saw some. But all in all, when you look at this, this is a great printer. As we mentioned, we did test a lot of different materials, and this is carbon fiber. I wanted to just show you a carbon fiber print. So this is a carbon fiber print. This is actually a coin holder that we, uh, that we printed for our car. And as you take a look at this, we'll just go ahead and rotate a little bit so you can see the overall quality, and then we'll put it right here so you can see the sides. Very, very nicely printed. Everything is just smooth, no defects at all. The only area that I'd say that I would have, um, I need to figure out still, is gonna be the bottom. Let me show you the bottom. The actual, so this is the bottom. We did have a raft uh, for the first layer and uh, I just couldn't take it off, right? So uh, when I took it off the build plate, it was a little hard to take off, but then after I took it off, then even removing this layer, I have to look at what my settings were, right? But this is uh, one of my, I'd say maybe my second successful carbon fiber print, but this is what that ruby head. Now the last one I'm gonna show you here is um, also on the printer. And you'll notice that behind me I have um, the same mask, but uh, it is actually in black. That is an ABS version, right? So that's ABS, and this is PETG. Uh, let's take a look at the actual quality. Now, the way this was printed, uh, this was printed just as you see it right here. Right, so it did have some supports on the bottom supporting the actual, um, I would say, mask itself. But you can look at the actual detail. Fantastic detail. Uh, there's some light defects in this area right here. Not a lot. Very, very light sanding. If you want to go ahead and use, let's say, like a resin uh, pour on this to just get it super smooth, you can do that as well. You'll notice that on the side here, I have maybe some slight supports that were here. But look at how clean this is all the way around, right? Very little work, and, and that's frankly, that's what I look for in a printer. I look for a printer that's going to leave me prints as perfect as possible so I can reduce the amount of work that I have to do. Now, one area that I would say that I noticed that there was something going on is right here. So notice I did have a layer line here, but it doesn't look like it was a layer shift, but something went on right here, but I don't really see it. It didn't really continue. It's not pervasive, so you can see how clean that is all the way around. So really, really like the quality. It's a great printer. Now guys, this is what the iFast printer looks like up front and close. Again, like we said, this is a large printer, but it is very quiet. Right now, it's actually running a print. Um, you can see kind of like the print details here in the upper corner. Uh, it's a uh, Batman, I believe it's the Arkham model that is printing right now. It's been going on for a little bit over a day now um, at a higher quality. Uh, you'll notice that you have right here the USB mounting system. So this is where you would load your print. Uh, this is the drawer, and this is that heat cavity that I had mentioned that basically keeps uh, the temperature inside of your print area regulated. So you basically have consistent temperature throughout. And you can actually see that uh, here in this area as it's showing you what that is. So literally, when you open this up, uh, there is you feel a difference in temperature. So in my house, uh, the temperature of the house is around 69 degrees. We like keeping it cold. And this is great because I don't run into a lot of print failures because of the temperature. Now, as I open this up, it may get a little bit louder. So I'm just going to stay quiet so that you can hear the ambient noise. All right, so that was the difference. Now, power button, very, very quick to start. And the menu system, as you can see here, I like the very large display that it shows you, again, a uh, depiction of what you're printing. Uh, and then it gives you all these statuses. It's gonna tell you your temperature of your bed, the temperature of your print nozzle. If you had two print heads uh, that are active, you would see that here as well. The actual, again, print area and the temperature, the time elapsed, time remaining, 
and then um, how fast it's printing. Right now it's printing at anywhere from 100 to 150 millimeters per second, depending on if it's printing supports or not. So it's going uh, pretty fast, right? And then also then you have the file name itself. Now at any time you can come in this area and you can make adjustments and there are several adjustments that you can do. You can change the heating bed, the nozzle temperature. Um, again, you can, uh, your turbines, you know, everything that's going on inside of the unit can be adjusted in this area and applied to the current print. Now what I like about this printer is that while it's enclosed, it does give you a clear view of what's taking place inside of the printer. So you can see the actual print head moving left to right, and you can see how it's printing. You also see the filament coming in. One of the things I was surprised is that there's no Bowden tube. So there's no Bowden tube required to take the filament from the filament spool that goes into the filament sensor that you can see there, and then it uh, loads it all the way up to uh, the print head. So everything here is, uh, you know, contained in this area and there's no Bowden tube that's required. Now you notice that the, the, the actual spool holders are one of the best spool holders that I've seen on any printer. Let me just show it to you right here for a second. So what I like about it is that you can easily remove your spool by just removing this, taking this out, and then your spool will come out. But there's really no drag, right? So we've seen um, other, I would say, uh, filament holders that there's some type of friction or resistance that gets created. While this doesn't have any sort of bearings at all, it's a smooth metal material that really works well with the filament itself. Now placing your filament spool is pretty simple. All you have to do is place it just like this on the, on the printer and then you're set to go if you have the two print heads going. Currently we're printing with a single print head and we're actually using the Ruby nozzle print head. And this is where we're printing um, ABS materials, carbon fiber materials, all those abrasive materials uh, you would use that print head. And, and that's what I have mounted now. But for those of you who are curious on what the actual print heads look like, uh, the dual print head, I just wanted to show you, um, this is kind of like uncovered. Um, it's a little dirty because we've been doing a lot of printing on it, but this is what the dual print system would look like, right? and then you can see uh, where the filament actually comes in. So this was um, on the system. We tested a lot of prints uh, on this guy here, and then we switched over. So let me show you some of the other prints that we got. Now, throughout the video, you've seen in the B-roll, uh, this guy right here. Uh, this is a super clean print. I just want you to take a look at how clean this print is right here. I'll just rotate it. You know, we have a seam there, but seams are hard to avoid. But as I rotate this, you can see uh, the overall quality. This is a really, really, a nice print. Um, if we look at that first layer, uh, we did have um, this was an actual drop of mine, so it's not a not a problem with the actual printer itself. But you can see what this overall quality looks like. Really, really sharp print. Now, one of the areas that I was completely floored with this printer uh, was in our D&D collection. So you guys all know that we are a D&D home. We've been uh, posting that. And I wanted to share with you just the overall beauty of some of these prints. So take a look at the detail here. Now, the thing to highlight with this print that came out of this printer, and you can see how the inside looks so, so great, is that this was printed without any supports, literally no support. So you see this coming up right here. All of this was printed uh, just standard, right? And this was two millimeter height, and look how clean that looks. Absolutely fantastic. So we have our entire uh, village uh, and a lot of different items that we've printed. We've printed mugs, uh, everything that we need to in order to have a very immersive uh, D and D experience. But look, look at the quality of that. That just looks spectacular. Now the other print I wanted to share with you is a multicolor print using two uh, the two colors in the filament. I have some D and D. Uh, objects inside of it so you can hear some rattling. But here as you can see is the multicolored. Now we have some artifacts here, some defects that we need to clean up. Um, obviously some tuning. I find that the color while it works well as you can see here, it's not as point and click as I would like. So while everything else is absolutely stupendous on this printer, you know just hit and go, you know put the filament and then just print. This one requires a little bit more mastery to it, but just wanted to show you what it looks like. So guys that wraps up our review of the QIDI 3D printer. Fantastic printer, not just for the professional, but if you're a hobbyist and would just like a high quality printer that's gonna render prints like this, you gotta check it out. See you in the next one.